Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Emil Franchi, uh, and what just happened uh, is my first thing. Uh, Newcastle went down fighting against Manchester City 5 0 at the Etihad. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I'm on the Brown Ale tonight and joined by some very brave souls uh, who are going to speak to us about that uh for extra time yeah i just forgot the name there because everything's just merging into one um <laughs> we've got Kristen heedage here hello Kristen. thank you for joining Hi. us all the way from new york pleasure thanks very much for having me and uh thomas concannon from war flags thanks for having us on yeah um <laughs> if thanks is the word <laughs> um, and we've got a former apprentice young apprentice contestant really pleased to have him with us here i uh, knew i recognized him from somewhere <laughs> <laughs> traffic lawyer by day or something whatever whatever someone called you yeah. uh, it's reese rosser the twitter sensation blimey i've never been so so proudly introduced so reese are you are you a fully fledged newcastle fan now i think, think i'm like probably there now got very into it i've really taken the five nil quite badly <laughs> you do look like you've just been shaved and pu pushed through a sports direct discount section by getting the uh, the older wear kit on there so yeah, I mean, my, my mug's downstairs yeah, okay mug's downstairs <laughs> don't don't spill it whatever you do um well gents um we'll start off let, let's let's go back to that nice place shall we just before the game um thomas i'll come to you first what was your general view Let's take away the, the lineup or anything like that. How did you think we would fare in this game before it even started? I think, like anyone, I thought we would lose. But at the same time, I thought we would be a little bit more expansive than what we were. I thought we'd have a little bit more of a go. Um, but it was very much the same sort of performance that we've been putting in against Man City for quite some time. Um, tedious, very tedious. Yeah. Um, Kristen, did, did you think there was at all an air of positivity you know there, there always seems to be something before Newcastle kick off where we think hang on a minute we might get something do you think that that was ever possible the first five minutes were okay um quite literally <laughs> when yeah, the teams I, walked out do you mean Is that <laughs> <about it? laughs> yeah they looked full of confidence at that point I, th I think I didn't have much positivity just because I thought this was a really highly structured Manchester City team against a Newcastle team that, I have to be honest, I don't see a lot of structure in the way they play. It's a lot more freeform. And I just thought that over time, at some point, City were going to find their rhythm. And that's when Newcastle were going to have to weather a storm. I just didn't think it would come after sort of seven, eight minutes. Mm, yeah. And, and Reese, I mean, we are safe mathematically now. But did you think that there was a kind of a feeling that Newcastle had nothing to lose going into this one? Uh, I think what would have would have been nicest to have seen a bit of youth. And a bit of something different, because certainly going into the game, my, my feeling was, well, it can't be any worse than last time. And then, lo and behold, 90 minutes of football later, it, it probably was. And, yeah. <laughs> and those hopes of any youth and anything different were completely dashed. But yeah, there was a lot of talk. We had, uh, was it um, Jack Young, I think, was was uh, on the bench. Tom Allen was in there. But the lineup was... Vastly different to uh, any team we've seen since uh, Project Restart began. We saw a lot of the players who have been coming off the bench. Lazaro, uh, Yedlin was in there. Um, we had no Lascelles and no Alan San Maximan. Um, did you have much confidence seeing the, the uh, lineup, Thomas? Uh, no, definitely not. I felt even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was just, when I saw the lineup, that was it. It was it was game over for me. Um, if I was there, I'm sure I would have only lasted 20 minutes. I would have been back in the car and back in the M62 because um, that yeah, just that lineup. <laughs> it, 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 it is what it is. Isn't it? We were we were missing a lot of players, which obviously doesn't help. But uh, yeah, we were always going to get thumped there when I saw that lineup. I think. Yeah, Kristen, did the um, did the the actual formation fill you with dread? Did you make head or tail of what exactly was going on with the fact that we had a, a full back at centre back, we had a centre back at centre defensive midfield, and a centre midfielder on the bench? Yeah, that element was a bit weird. I couldn't fully understand that. I thought maybe he Bruce wanted a bit more flexibility so he could switch to a back five or back three depending on how the first fifteen went. But the idea of a four four two and Shelby pressing, I didn't think was a terrible idea. I thought okay. That kind of works. There were elements of what Southampton did the other day, I thought, in that thought process. But the execution just wasn't there because the pace wasn't there. And so when they did win it back or they did ruffle City's feathers a bit, 
there wasn't any speed to get up and support those attacks. So it, it broke down too quickly. And there was a few times I saw, I think, Gale and, and other players, they would get the ball in City's half and you would see several blue shirts and no Newcastle shirts anywhere near. So it, you're not going to cause them any problems doing that. Yeah, sorry, I was confusion on my face there when you said Newcastle ruffled their feathers. I'm just, I'm, I don't know what <laughs> happened. When, when was that? Which game was that? But, um, I, it, I mean... There's a lot of players that we're going to talk about here, Reese. But just let's let's have a quick look at like the the first couple of goals. Did you think that was just City in in full throttle, or or were Newcastle just letting them walk through us? Uh, the the problem is everyone was in so much space. So you look at Mares, you look at Jesus, both of them for for most of the game, nobody tracked back against them. And so the first goal, I think it's it's Ben Taleb doesn't track back, Lazaro doesn't track back. And then you've got Jesus in acres of space and, and it's just a recipe for disaster against City. And and that's the problem with that that back four, back five, is if you're going to try and play the ball out from the back, which surely Newcastle must have been trying to do, which is what one would think why Bravkas had so many touches. You you can't do that against City. They'll, they'll play you off the ball. And that's exactly what happened with the high press. Yeah, and and we mentioned uh, about the defence. It, it did just look a mess, Thomas, didn't it? Um, we saw Federico Fernandez looking more lost than he has ever been in in recent weeks. Do you think that's a a bad review for kind of the way he's played this season? Do you think it's bad to judge him on the way he played against Man City, or do you think it was just that the whole structure was letting the entire thing down? Yeah, I just think the entire structure. I'm not really gonna. Uh, blast for Fernandez because I think he's actually been one of the shining lights this season. Um, probably one of our best centre defenders and uh, central defenders anyway. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm not going to come down on hard, uh, come down hard on Fernandez because it would just be that would be very very harsh. But um, yeah, I, the entire structure just wasn't right. Um, we, it was just put the team was just put together because of the amount of amount of players we had missing. You know, so. I, I, yeah, it was just a recipe for disaster, I feel. I'm sorry I'm so um, negative tonight. <laughs> hey, it's fine. I, th- I think um, I think we, we have to try and find whatever positives we can here. So, I, 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 you know what, fair enough, because I, I think it, it is very easy to pick apart players. And, and I think WhatsApp groups were, were firing off about Fernandez being missing and, and various other players who we will get on to. But it just seemed weird that people were saying, oh, Fernandez, Fernandez. And I'm like, well, you know, he, he's playing against a team that tore apart the, the current champions. Okay. Um, um, who who are coming back with a vengeance from a from a loss against Southampton? How um, how bad is it for Newcastle, Kristen, that that we had to face them after an embarrassing defeat away? Yeah, that's not ideal. Absolutely, that's not ideal. I think you can put in a better showing than that, though. That that's what I think will frustrate maybe Bruce, some of the supporters as well, is the fact that the overall performance it just lacked a lot of energy and industry, and I think that's. Those are two traits to me that I have associated with Newcastle since we came back up is there's always fight. It might not, might not always be a, a lot of skill on show, but you can guarantee there's a good amount of fight in that group. And I think to me, like tonight at least, it seemed as if that was the consequence of maybe one or two players who have kind of just accepted I'm off in the summer or 2020 still on the calendar off, but you know what I mean, off in the next transfer window. So have I really got the energy to, to really track back and, and put some effort in here? Yeah, it's it's a real shame. Um, I mean, what what on earth has happened to Fabian Scher? Um, Reese, have, have you got any answers to the way he was playing today? I mean, it, it was a player who many Newcastle fans took to their hearts for, for more reasons than one. Um, the, the face, the beard, uh, the, 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 the occasional runs up the pitch to just go and take on every single player and, and as well as that, the, um, the wonder goals. But I, I don't know what it is. is. Is he just not fitting into this structure or is he just, like Krista says, is he thinking about the move? Um, it, it's funny because the last time Bruce switched to that formation of playing share slightly further up the pitch he looked better and then today he looked like a part-time mate it, it was almost like when let's say Beckham knew he was leaving United, Man United and then played part-time and it's exactly the same sort of performance where he's just not in the game he's got no interest in running for the ball no interest in tracking back and good looking or not it just doesn't fit in with this team it's I, I mean I, I'm just devastated by that whole situation we we, we saw Glimmers of it in the cup game, didn't we, Thomas? We we've seen that kind of style creeping in. Do you think that he is going to be one of the first players out the door this summer? I, I'd I'd be surprised. I, I think that would be a bit of a shame as well because I quite like him. 
Yeah. Um, I, I just think that, I don't know whether it's the lack of games means there's been a lack of interest when he has mm-hmm. been playing. I, I really don't know. I just, I'm really surprised because last season he, I, I thought he was tremendous. Um, I, I would have put him and Fernandez and, and Lejeune as my, as my three. Um, well, actually, there's, a, there's an interesting really, point about that, Thomas. I was just going to ask, actually, because, you know, we, we didn't have a, a centre-back at centre-back, but a lot of people saying that, that Cher doesn't really fit into a, a, a back four, perhaps. So, I, I mean, what what could we have done differently? Do you, do you think that we were just so lost without the cells that we couldn't do anything? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I just think we're just... <laughs> I'm kind of in a daze as to what, from watching that, and uh, it, it's with that structure because it was so just like I said before, it was just put together. Um, I, don't, I just don't think we can look too much into the the performances of certain people in that in that game. I, I just think it's it's an, I just want to forget. I really do. I, uh, I think if I can, I think with Cher, the interesting thing is when I watched him under Benitez, he seems to want almost a bit of freedom at centre back to advance with the yeah. ball. I think mm-hmm. of the goal against Cardiff where he just picked up and saw a channel and thought, I'm going to go for this, why not? Mm, yeah. And that's that's a great skill if you can build enough, I would say, structure around him for people to cover, for people to fill in that space. But I think in whether it's a back four system or a back three, I don't know if he's got that same setup now. And that's not to criticise Bruce, just say I think the team has changed. And I think, unfortunately, Shaw's one of the players that's been left behind by that. And I, it's not ideal because you potentially could have sold him for a decent amount last year. I know Tottenham were sniffing around and things like that. But at the minute, I just don't see where he fits into the way this team plays, whether it's midfield or, or anyway, he just looks a little bit lost. Just hasn't got the freedom that, he, that, like, that you've touched on. It's, everyone will point to Sam Maximin not being there as, as part of the reason why it didn't work. But in some way, the cells not being in that, that back four or back five, whether he's the best centre-back performance-wise is, is one thing, but whether he's crucial to that team in terms of organisation, giving Cher the freedom to move around, it, in, in my opinion anyway, and it might be an unpopular one, that, that, back, that back line without the cells is completely without structure, and that's something we've all said, mm-hmm. is that there's yeah. no structure in that team. I, I've and, picked up on that as well, Reese. to be honest. I mean, it's like Lascelles is... We, we, we agree he's not a, a world beater in terms of centre backs. He's not got the, the full ability that we would like. But I think as a partnership that's grown over time, Lascelles and Fernandez have got the consistency to uh, allow a, a mistake like we saw against West Ham. And, and personally, I would have much rather have had Lascelles on there today just to, just to see what was going on. Sorry, Reese, I, I cut you off slightly there. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it, it picks up on what you said then in a way that that Richie Fernandez own goal if the cells was playing I don't think that situation would have happened because they'd have mm-hmm. they'd have been focused on it and there wouldn't have been the same space yeah <laughs> well it was a you know there's so many messes here but um Kristen um I wanted to quickly um ask you about your thoughts on a player that uh, perhaps wouldn't be getting sold but may not ever step foot into St James's Park ever again after this season is out uh Nabil Bentaleb um, could we just uh, sorry, Benta No thanks, Benta No thanks, I should say. <laughs> um, what 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 was the problem with him today? <laughs> so here's the thing. I went back and looked what I tweeted when he joined, just to see what I actually said at the time, and I stand by it. I see why the club did this. It was a punt. It was a punt on a player that I thought was very good at Tottenham, but at Schalke had had pretty consistent reports about attitude issues. And I think that's kind of what I've seen at Newcastle. I've seen little flickers of something decent, a nice little pirouette, a nice pass through the lines. But his, his application and his concentration let him down consistently. That, that, to me, is what the fifth goal sums up. It's not a, a necessarily a bad technical pass. But to make that pass when he did, that's the problem because he's just not switched on. A, a sort of, dare I say, Titus Bramble moment to evolve an old spirit. That, it's that sort of situation where you think, yeah, just... For I think it's eight million pounds, eight million euros, something like that they want. But then a, a pretty hefty wage on top of that. I don't think he's worth that. But I appreciate why the club thought, yeah, we can probably fix him. He's he's one of those broken toys they've taken on before, a bit like Ben Arthur and things like that. 
It's interesting. But not that same on. skill level, to be clear. No, no, I was very. Say... <laughs> I know how YouTube comments work. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the point where Bentaleb is running through the Watford defence on Saturday. Who knows what might happen with that? Um, speaking of players that were running riot. I, I know it's hard to find any positivity with um, Newcastle at the minute, but um, Thomas, just a word on Phil Foden. Um, I think as as fans of, of good play, um, we could call ourselves, how lucky were we that he just wasn't firing today? Yeah, I agree. Um, I was actually slightly looking forward to seeing him play, even though it was against us. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing his future, especially with England. I think he'll, I think he'll be a star with England. Uh, Man City are quite lucky that they've brought someone like that through the ranks. Um, he's just he's just a really 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 good player. You know he, he's got the he just flows through the game. I think it was that chance in the first half when he um, he was appealing for a corner um, and it was just how he just glided through. Now he, how old is he? Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen. I, I I just think honest I'm really looking forward to seeing where he goes. Really really good player. Yeah. Uh, we might as well talk about some more positives about Phil Foden for a second. Reese, do you think that he's the type of person that could maybe lead England in the future? Do you think he's lucky that he's got this this year of the Euros not being on to, to really solidify himself in that team for next year? It, it's going to be really interesting to see what England look like next year. In that you've got Sancho, Rashford, Greenwood, Foden. That that attacking front four isn't as reliant as it has been on, on Kane and to, to the same extent Sterling. Um, it's good in a way that Foden is at City and it's been based around Silva. And, you know, Silva had, a, sadly to say, an absolutely cracking game. <laughs> I, I left him on my bench in fantasy football, which has, has <laughs> oh, really, really ruined my evening even more. Um, but the, you can see his players developed around that. And, it, and it's quite nice in a way to have a, a young English player who's not learnt at Tottenham. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... Well, I, I'm absolutely over the moon because Sterling came off the bench and he was my captain today. So there we are. Um, I took that chance. Um, sorry, Kristen, to put this one back to you here, but um, Newcastle had no changes at, at half time. Is there anything that you would have liked to have seen done earlier, given the fact that we were only 2-0 down, that, that could have changed things drastically? Did, did you see any things that, that, that could possibly stop the, the, the real floodgates opening? I think you could have put all five subs on. Um, you wouldn't have had to take no players off as well. But I think if you put those other five subs on, giving yourself 16 outfield players, you never know. Um, or 15 outfield players. <laughs> it took me a say. second but, there to register what you were saying. I was saying, actually, you know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> but, I wonder if you no, thought I, of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, at that point, it's a hide to nothing, which is why I felt a little bit sorry for Matty Longstaff coming on. Because I thought, here's someone that's in a really delicate position He's in negotiation still with the club, according to Bruce. And he's just sort of thrown on to get a little cameo against a team that he's probably not even going to see much of the ball of. And if he is, I, he, he didn't look, I thought, I don't want to say very good, but he just looked rusty. And I just thought, if you're trying to convince him to stay, I don't know if minutes like that are really going to help that situation much. So I don't think there was really anything he could have done outside of just throwing bodies into the, into the action. What do we make of Matty Longstaff today? Because um, on our last extra time, we were saying that, you know, if, if we want to really show him, it's interesting you mentioned that, Kristen, that we, we want to show him that we do want him to stay by giving him some game time. And now that we're safe, why not just throw him on? Do you reckon he should have perhaps had the start today, Thomas? Yeah, I do. 100%. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have no idea why he didn't start him. I think that would have added a little bit of support to Joel Linton up front as well, other than Shelby, Shelby playing in a, in a 10 role just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, if you can call it that. Um, I would have just, you know, we've seen it from Longstaff, Matty, um, in terms of, of getting up there and supporting, obviously, in both of the Man United games. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I just would have given that little bit of little bit of character on the pitch, that little bit of, you know, probably getting stuck in, like I say, getting up there and helping support, maybe try and get us up the pitch a little bit. I definitely would have given him minutes, especially with the situation that he's in, um, if you want to keep him, prove it. Yeah. It's interesting that. Um, Reese. I know we, we, we touched on it briefly there, but the, the Richie own goal, um, Newcastle scored at least. So that, that's, that's, that's one thing. And, <laughs> that, and it was that's quite, a, quite a finish from what I was saying. But, um, I mean, what went wrong? Did you think that just kind of sums up the performance, the fact that Newcastle could only score in their own net? It's, it sums it up totally. It's an absolute shambles of a defence that for that own goal. No, no one's looking up. 
Richie's kicked it away, it's hit Fernandez, it's gone in. It it sums up the entire game that you, you can't do anything right. And sometimes when it goes against you, it goes against you. And part part of the problem is, and, and it's that lack of change, it's the, the lack of squad depth. When you look at who can you bring on, the answer is isn't the options just aren't there. It's it, it's not like there's someone there that you can magically throw in at half time to change the game. Because there isn't that depth there. And and that's what City have, have done well with Foden, is that they've invested properly in youth in the training ground and brought players through. And whether Sancho Sancho left why he did, but he's another product of that youth system. Yeah, and, and likely to see him back back in the Premier League uh, at any moment, uh, imminently to use our favourite word right now. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's interesting you mentioned that the substitutions there, the 66th minute we did see uh, inspiring changes of Javier Manquillo on for Valentino Lazaro. We saw Dwight Gale come on for Joe Linton, Matty Longstaff on for John Joe Shelby. Uh, and later in the game, we were lucky enough to get Yoshinori Muto and Christian Atsu making some cameos there. Um, Christian, I, I, I want to just talk about our strikers there. Joe Linton and Gale almost had an equal share of the game, but um, there's uh, still a lot of people who I think would like to blame Joe Linton for the fact that we conceded five today. What, how do you think we... What 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 what's, what what can you say for him today? I thought he was nowhere to be seen on all five goals. I think he's got a lot to answer for. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think <laughs> he should have scored them. With, yeah, yeah I, th- I think with him, I've just got a piece of notepad paper, and it's just did he play well or did he not have service, and and tick which one feels like an accurate description. And in many cases, it's a little bit of both. I thought today actually he was okay. I thought he brought other players into the game. He played as a figurehead fairly well. I think he's, from what I've seen, I'd, I'd looked it up the other day, just some of the analytics and stuff. He's doing more defensively than Rondon was in terms of actions, but he's not getting as many shots off and he's not getting the ball as much in terms of passes received. So I just think he's a very lonely figure. And and when I watched him for Hoffenheim, he was much more withdrawn, much deeper. It, it was no surprise to me that the Bundesliga even compared him to Roberto Firmino. I don't think he's that technically strong as Firmino but I see similarities in the fact they want to come away from the play drag defenders deeper with them whereas Rondon for me is is a classic target man and that transition has been so jarring and it's for that reason alone it's no shock to me that Andy Carroll looks a better fit for that team than than Joe Linton ever really has and and I I just feel sorry for him because I just think he's he's been thrown to the wolves a bit this season And, and yeah he hasn't always tried his best and put the most effort in. But at the same time, I don't know how much support he's had on and off the pitch. Yeah, it's it's been a difficult time. And we, we know the story about, you know, be, being in a new city. Um, I, I believe his family's over now. Uh, I don't know if Joe Linton's answer to the problem was by getting someone pregnant to make himself feel more at home, <laughs> uh, as we saw with the, the celebrations in that first one. Uh, but contrastingly, Gail came on. Did you see any difference um, in Newcastle's gameplay when Gail was on the pitch, Thomas? Um, to be honest, I was starting to switch off by then. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was starting to lose concentration. Uh, I saw G- Gale. There was one time he was running forward with the ball, and I thought, oh, just go, but just go alone, just go alone. But it was as someone said before, City just had six or seven players around the ball, even when they're four and up. I mean, there's just not a lot you're going to do, really. It was quite um, a scary stat after the game, by the way, that Man City had 93.7% pass completion rate. God, it's, it's honestly um, Newcastle, Newcastle's wasn't on the page. <laughs> I don't think there was anything to put down, to be honest. So, yeah. it, there were it, no passes. It, it, well, the pass completion, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's all we can say. Uh, the, the only bit of, uh, I mean, there was a slight bit of controversy, you might say, with the with the free kick. Um, was it a free kick, do you think, Reese? Uh, the one that, that Cher conceded, which which led to the, the goal? It's, the problem now is with, with VAR and, and all the other checks that it, it's almost taken the human element out of it. And it becomes more difficult to challenge a decision like that because you say, well, the, the challenge is there to be had. If, if, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Uh, it, it was harsh. What, what's concerning is that the goal came so easily. And, and that, again, is, is a lack of organisation, lack of structure in that back four. Or yeah. Back five. yeah, Thomas, I saw your t- tweet about Dubravka um, with free kicks. What, what, what were you getting out with that kind of thing? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I need to look up this stat. That that's five or six goals he's conceded from free kicks in the time that he's been here. Direct free kicks, and and I just feel 
there's a the, like we just said there's a lack of organization in the wall the amount of space that's given for them to aim i mean that 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 was a good yard inside the post and he, he hasn't moved it's a great strike don't get me wrong and there was van arnold for palace earlier in the season again it was on debravka's side i remember there was one against man united there was one against arsenal i'm sure there's there's been another one um but i, I just feel <laughs> that's the only bone i ever pick with debravka is that i think his organization on free kicks is quite poor and it, it gives the it gives the opposition a really big chance. I mean, De Bruyne is a sensational goalkeeper. As he he made a sensational save against um, mm. was it Silva's shot. Um, but you know, it's the only bone I've got to pick is just with free kicks. The lack of organisation. There's just a huge gap for them to aim for. We did mm. speak um, in in one of the other games. I think it was after the Villa game. Um, Paul, who we had on, did say that. Stuff like that is why we have Dubravka at Newcastle and why Dubravka isn't at a, a bigger team. Um, but but yeah, it's it's just a shame. And the, the fifth goal goes in um, away five nil um, against the Manchester <laughs> team. How about it, lads? Um, oh, I mean, it, it's 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 just it's horrible. And I haven't even got a chance for us to pick a star man. But Kristen, is there anyone who played today? Possibly the man who we just mentioned. Is there anyone in that team who you could potentially say played well? I don't even know if I feel comfortable latching onto well. I think, I feel, like I said, I think Joe Linton had moments. I thought Dubravka was as solid as you'll expect from a goalkeeper, free kick aside. But no, it, it, yeah, it's 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 very I, sort of landing between. It was very much one of those games against Manchester City, and also. Have they got much to play for at the minute? Probably not. So I think she's a bad combination of situations that have led to it, really. Yeah. Um, well, you know, if we can't pick a star man, I, I did pop down here that we could pick ourselves a, a desert island dickhead each. Um, and that is the, the one player that was on that pitch today uh, that you would take away on, on your first holiday when this is all over. So, uh, Thomas, I'll, I'll go to you first, mate. I, I just think for all the banter on Twitter tonight, I think Ben Aleb gets my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Benton, all thanks to that. Yeah, um, yeah. uh, Reese, have you got a choice? I, I thought Lazaro was terrible. Really poor. That, that's it. Yeah. That, yeah. Stick him in the suitcase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kristen, have, have you got anyone? I think Thomas Bentaleb and I are going on a three man holiday somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where? Well, I don't we... know. Can we invite was, Steve McManaman to make it? Well, uh, there we go. I was about oh. to say, I was about to say, Steve McManaman's coming with me because, my <laughs> word, I mean, Thomas, have you got anything to say about that that performance on oh, the comms? I mean, it was oh, it was back and forth, back and forth about Steve Bruce's incredible job as Newcastle were going down to yet another goal. What what was what was happening with that? Uh, I just can't understand how people get paid to 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 spout the absolute shite that he did there. Um, I just I find it incredible how you know the, the, the paid to talk about football and, and understand every single Premier League team. To say that we've been fantastic this season is an, is an absolute insult. Um, and it's not just trying to defend if he's mates with Steve Bruce, I don't know, but that's just a, it's even an insult to Bruce to, to suggest that he's even done a fantastic job. I don't think he has. And I think he'd probably admit that himself. We could have been better this season. Mm. Um, I just find it incredible. And then it's the, it's the astonishment as to how bad we're playing. I think we all knew how bad we were going to play at Man City away. Um, and it's the astonishment that, that we're we're sitting back and all this, you know. I just yeah, the lack of knowledge is is astonishing. Yeah, Reese, do you think that this game kind of sums up the the holes in Newcastle this season under Bruce? Uh, it's it's maybe unfair to say it does because it was a game missing, you know, Almiron, Samatz, and Lascelles. Um, but at the same time, it lays bare that lack of depth, that lack of structure, that lack of organisation. Um, again, again, the commentary suggested that the players will be expecting Steve Bruce to have the answers at half time. I don't think there's a Newcastle fan in the world who was expecting <laughs> Steve Bruce to have any answers at half time of that game. And that was probably proven right by the fact he made no subs. Yeah, yeah, exactly he had a the same in the. He had a few written on his arm. It was like uh, G- Germany, Germany three, England four. You know, yes, like Kristen said. Um, there's just a few in there. How long's the Great Wall of China? Just dishing out a few bits and bobs. Steve, Steve Bruce's halftime pub quiz in there. Um, but um, there was another thing as well, just about Newcastle not losing like this since we've come back to the Premier League the last time. 
Kristen, what, what, where, where have these performances been hiding? Is, is there some credit that we can give to Newcastle as a whole since we've come back from that, that relegation that we don't lose like this that often? I think Martin Dubravk is a decent sort of portion of the reason for that. He's, he, he's, I've heard some interesting stories about how he even came to the club in terms of he was just a name on a pile of potential goalkeepers. It was just a complete chance that he arrived. And even that a few championship clubs had passed on him because they thought he was a bit too erratic. But I think he's a fantastic goalkeeper. And then I said this the other day that to me, this period in Newcastle's history, it reminds me just a little bit of the Chris Hutton to Alan Pardew transition where the manager before built a real strong defensive unit that wasn't maybe the most expansive and great in the final third. And then someone came in, took the handbrake off, but still had a little bit of carryover from that previous iteration. And I kind of think that's what's happened with Bruce. He's encouraged them to go forward. So players like we talked about before, Shaw has seen a bit of a regression. But John Joe Shelby is on for, I think, his best goal scoring season in the Premier League with Newcastle. So it's it's crazy. We mentioned Shelby as being probably one of the better products of the the Bruce season, I guess. Um, you know, Shel- Shelby, who rarely got a look in under under Benitez. Um, so it's one of those things. Um, one thing that I, I was wanting to ask about today, Thomas, was just th- this thing about Bruce running players into the ground. Now, um, I've spoken about this with a few people on Twitter. I've mentioned it in a podcast that I did with um, Andy on the channel yesterday. Do you think that's a fair thing to say, given that the first four league games were the ones where we were likely to get the most points. Do you think it was a good idea to say, right, let's throw everything we can at the likes of Sheffield United, who haven't been bad this season, get that win against Bournemouth and and obviously against relegation threatened Villa and West Ham. Do you you think this was a wise idea? Do you think it's fair to say that Bruce has ran them into the ground? Uh, I mean, potentially, but I think he's absolutely right in the way that he's, so he's, he's played his best players. Um, I think we all would have said that these four games were massive. They were huge. Um, and we all wanted to get safety as soon as possible. Um, we all know now that, you know, the, the term that they're on the beach is, is probably right. Um, I, I do worry if we'll even win another, if we'll even get another point for the rest of the season. But I think he was right to do what he did, get the wins when he could. And if it meant that some, play, some players were bound to be tired anyway with the schedule. So... Yeah, you know, no, it's every it's, single it was, team's going to face the same problem. Yeah, and and as well as that, I mean, we're, we're looking at like a, an even stricter version of the Christmas schedule where Newcastle were, were going down every mm. single day of these soft tissue injuries. So, um, how how do Newcastle respond against Watford on um, on on Saturday, Kristen? Do you, do you think that we can maybe see the standard Newcastle performance that comes in again, where we've just been absolutely drubbed, but somehow we, we turn it around. Yeah, I think you've you've given some key players a rest tonight, some Maxima and Almiron. I'd be inclined to put them straight back in. I'd also put my long staff in and just say, look, you know, you say you're worth this much, go and show us how much you're worth. And, and really sort of challenge him to, to put forth a good performance. And then from there, I mean, Watford aren't in great form um, across sort of the whole of... of uh, post-lockdown football. I know they won the other day. But if you can get ahead and by 60-65, then start to make changes again. I, th- I think it's it's that idea of just bringing players off when you're ahead in the game. That's It's that micromanagement that I think some managers really excel at, whereas some players, or managers rather, can get a bit formulaic with it and time their substitutions to a specific moment. Yeah. Um, Reese, do you, do you want to hesitate? How, how do you reckon Saturday might go against Watford? Because uh, I think Watford um, won last night, didn't they, with Danny Welbeck scoring? So they've took a step towards safety. It's looking pretty grim for Aston Villa and uh, Bournemouth now with that with that gap growing. Um, do, do you think that Newcastle could perhaps get a draw out of that one? It, it'll all depend how... Bruce approaches it because it's in effect got two two choices either you look at it and say I want to work out my best team for next season or you look at it and say well I'll, I'll give some of those players who haven't played very much a run out or look at youth or, or look at players like Atze at Watford were, were not brilliant last night against Norwich they conceded in I think, the first four minutes um, if Newcastle can go out early and get at them it, it could well be on to a similar way that the Bournemouth game played out if, yeah. if they don't and try and sit back, Watford with, with Deeney and, and Welbeck 
are, are the sort of team that, that will hit you and, and can punish you. Mm. So it's it's not an easy tactical choice for Bruce to make as to how to approach that game on Saturday. Yeah, and, we, and we've seen that Newcastle are scoring a few more, Thomas. Do you, do you think that because Watford are down there and let's not forget they are below Newcastle, do you think that the type of team that we could attack in the same way that we did with Bournemouth? Because they're not they're not safe by any means yet. I think that's the risk. I think that that's the that's the big point is that they're not safe yet. And I was literally just looking at their fixtures. They've got us and then West Ham and then Man City away and Arsenal. So or Man City at home and then Arsenal. And I just think they'll probably look at these two games and they are massive for Watford. Uh, they could get safety pretty uh, if they win on Saturday. Um, that's that's why I'm slightly concerned. But in terms of us going at them, I think we can definitely get at them just like we did against Bournemouth. Um, if you if you've got Maxi playing. Almiron back in, and you're and you're going at them with a bit of pace. I think there's definitely a chance. Like I say, it's just it's a huge game for Watford, and that's why I'm just a little bit concerned based on tonight's evidence that we seem to have just packed up. Yeah, uh, Kristen. Just before before we wrap up, um, we've seen Andy Carroll get an injury again. How much do you think that's got to do with the fact that he shaved off the Jeff beard? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely everything. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely everything. Were you disappointed I'm to see him clean shaven? Me. Well, I was saying you, you are the you are the bearded man here uh, al- <laughs> alongside these these very much baby faces right now. So uh, I was wondering if you were the expert opinion on these things. To be fair, mine covers sins. I don't think Andy's does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I think you know what it, it's been such an odd season for him because I just wanted one goal. I, he might still get that before the end of the season. I just want one goal and maybe not a consolation goal. Just one moment to go, yeah, that was a fun experience. I mean, I know he's here for another year, but the, the truth is I don't know how his body holds up. I genuinely have no medical background. So um, I think Reese is the smartest of the group here. He'll probably be able to tell us <laughs> how he'll hold up over the next 12 months. Lawyer, he's a medical expert. Reese, have you got any anything? Well, if I was to use my medical opinion, no, I haven't got a clue. Oh, it's OK then. Uh, well, as, as we know, Reese, you can only do so much. Uh, you can only do so much. There we are. Thank you very much. We need to get that in there. Young Apprentice fans will be rejoicing around the country right now. Um, lads, this has been the most difficult one to talk about, even more so than the Cup game, I think. So um, fair play to you all. Um, this has been Extra Time. Thank you very much for watching.